Sisters, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Well, hello. Well, hello. Here we are again. Hi, <laughs> Uh, th- the lovely Tom Campbell is away on a secret but mission in England. Can. You know, he was last seen with Michelle Obama. Oh, I uh, saw yes. that. Did Are you, see you kidding me? Are you yes, kidding pictured me? Pictured with Adele, Mich- Michelle Obama, Tom, RuPaul, and Tom and Campbell. And Tom Campbell. Put that yeah. What's together. going on? I know. Can't say a word. But you are here. I'm here. I'm Alec, Alec Mappa. I'm yes. guest starring on the show today. I'm a frequent Fabulous. visitor. Thank I'm like you the, for yes. the Uncle Arthur of <laughs> uh, the Wow Report. Yes, I, I would yeah. say that you are almost a permanent guest host. I would say. I I I, I hope you so. You are the Joan <laughs> Rivers. Uh huh. Oh sure. Now you're you're pink. You have pink eye today. Is it contagious? I'm, this I'm is blushing. James St. James. James St. James. Literally pink eyes. Yeah. Yeah. For those of you watching, you, are they, what, what, those they are. watching on the YouTube. Oh, they're bloodshot because I've been drinking downstage. No. Oh, okay. We've been doing a little, we have some kava. I don't know if you know kava. <gasps> yes. I would like some kava. Yeah, Why they, didn't you bring up some upstairs? We do. I mean, they, they sponsor our transformations now. Um, Segura Vudish. Are you kidding? Yeah. So You were living my dream life. You're drinking <laughs> booze and getting made up by and drag queens and, and getting paid for it. Yeah, That's right. And we can watch your fabulous show. On Transformations on Well yes. Presents Plus, and then also on Well Presents on YouTube as well. Right, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Oh, that's really I, 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 Yeah, I think the Bianca Del Rio episode oh. where you guys are doing the Charleston <laughs> and she <laughs> makes you up and you look like Eve Arden is <laughs> wonderful. The, some of them because there's also like a Milk one and Trixie. Yes. those are some of my yes. favorites too. Yeah. yeah, but you have a show too right I now. I do. You are on do. Worst of, uh, celebrity. Worst cooks. celebrity cooks on Food Network yes. this Sunday, April twenty. First, nine eight central right. with the following celebrities me jimmy walker jim j bullock jonathan lipnicki morgan fairchild <gasps> kim whitley taryn manning oh. and tanya harding oh my tanya right. tell I, me about saving the morgan. yes. morgan's fabulous is okay so wait then? this is number 10 number 10 Oh, this is number 10. This is what we do. We count down the top 10 things that right. make us go wow. wow. We are in a bit of an Alex renaissance right now. Because yes, we because have every time Mitchell. I come over, I'm like Swiss cheese. I always have a hole to plug. <laughs> something. Uh, uh, yeah, Doom Patrol. I'm on Doom Patrol on DC Universe. Uh, playing and the much beloved um, Mr. Da- Rodney Danger. Rod, uh, Henry Danger. Henry Danger. My yes, kid watches yes, it. Yes. it. That was you. Yeah, there's. I'm on. I, I entertain the children as well. <laughs> <laughs> I play Mr. Frittleman, uh, who is the uh, president like of Frittle a, Snacks. Yes, yeah. sounds a little dodgy. Yeah, yeah frittling around. <laughs> but um, uh, Morgan Fairchild yeah. is one of the contestants on Worst Cooks in America, would roll into the studio full beat, sure, hair and Always. curlers. And I was like, Morgan, there's a whole team of people to make you look like Morgan Fairchild. She goes, I already know how to look like <laughs> Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> it's a lot easier to do it myself. Oh, I love that. Yeah. She never that goes anywhere not looking. She up. looks fantastic. Yeah, exactly. She, she looks fantastic. That is that old school, like I'm, mm. like Dolly Parton is yeah. going to get dressed yeah. and get ready to get dressed and get ready. Right. Debbie Reynolds was like that too, rolled yeah. in oh, with her yeah. face done because uh-huh. she, know, she knows how to do it. Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooking. Yeah. I, I, you are not a worse cook though. You're a great cook. Um, I love to eat, but that doesn't necessarily translate into uh, a, a being a good cook. I uh. came in with a with a with a lot of ego, and a, and then I was schooled. It was like oh. chef boot camp. And it was uh, Tyler Florence and Chef Ann Burrell, and they yelled at me a great deal. And I really? had I had no knife skills, and I, I cut up my fingers a lot. You'll see a lot <laughs> of that on the show. But the medic on the um, show, <laughs> so you was handsome, six foot four, mm-hmm. oh. uh, Dominican, just oh. like just Doesn't like a nice yum. So, you so I made a meal. Yeah, yeah, I was slashing my uh, wrists. I, I became yes. a cutter on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it premieres uh, Sunday night. And it, uh, Easter Easter Sunday. And what about Tanya Harding? What's her cooking like? <sighs> Tanya is, I mean, talk about authentic people. I can't, <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't want to know who was on the show. I was like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. So I watched I, Tanya on the plane. Oh. Margot Robbie. Uh, yes. Alice and Jenny. Lovely. Brilliant. Yeah. And I was like, the fr- so I walk into the makeup room. The first person I see is Tanya Harding. And I hugged her. And I said, honey, I'm so sorry that you went through all that. She goes, that's ah, okay. I've been a punchline for the past 25 years. You want to smoke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which yeah, I can see. She loves the gays because we're the only men who've ever been nice to her. That's nice. So she was, mm. she was, she clung to me and Jim J. Bullock. We're getting a signal from Blake. But to I move would on. Oh, so you take all the time you like. For the YouTube. Uh, for, the, for the YouTube. Yes. Tell me a little bit about Jonathan Lipnicki. Ah. Uh, 
Lovely. Yes. Lovely. Very, very. He has the face of an angel and he has a dirty, filthy mind. <laughs> he won't necessarily tell a, a filthy joke, but we'll uh, we'll laugh at one. One of our first challenges was a, a, a steak challenge. And they said, with this knife, you're going to have to French the bone. And <laughs> I was like, I looked right back in Jonathan Lipnicki and he was grinning <laughs> like, just like crazy. <laughs> like he's a dirty little boy. <laughs> That's just funny. the sweetest thing. What is and Frenching? was always, always mm. falling asleep with his um, shirt kind of riding up. Really? So I saw a lot of Jonathan Lipnicki. Uh, what midriff. is, I hate, you know, what is Frenching the bone? Frenching the bone is like when you have a ribeye steak or a very big steak, mm. you have to take the bone out. You have to debone the steak. And you do that with a very, uh, uh, yeah. And it, with a very specific meat knife uh, mm. for Frenching the, the bone. It just sounds so exciting. Yeah, yeah. Are you really now a better cook? I mean, have you learned Yes, things? yes. Yeah. I learned a lot. I learned that if your station is messy, your food's going to taste messy. That it, uh, they had the, the, the process called mise en place, where oh. all of your ingredients and all of the tools that you're going to need are in one place so that you don't move from the spot. Because anytime you... you dissipate anytime you go away to get something else it dissipates the energy of what you're doing oh yes I so enjoy it's kind that. of like a Marie Kondo thing so you do all your chopping and sorting first, first before you start first combining the mise en place so you could just add and cook and stir you're not racing around all no, around. but I imagine this mise en place works with uh, makeup stations yes it probably works yes. with every area yes. of your life if you yeah. get if, if uh, like if mise en place James yes in, Toot. In, in our, um, when we're blogging when we're anything mise en place mise en place Yes. Yes. Now, can you uh, speak to this in terms of the people who've made you up? Have they had? Have there been people who've showed up unorganized with their stuff all over the place? And how does that affect the paint? I would think that you're probably correct in that the people who are most organized and ha come in with a clear plan get the job done, mm. as opposed to because I have a tendency I can dissipate energy. I can sure. I can make things chaos yes. in, in a drop of a hat. Shocking. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I have a feeling that um, I am the the disruptor. Yes. And if if you know what you're doing, then I you won't be as so you're the denim, denim, <laughs> demon I, on place. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I had a little yeah. difficulty getting that out. Miss <laughs> Eason on place. Yes. <laughs> well, well okay, um, yeah, Sunday night, well, April 21st, and wait. watch me on Doom Patrol right. in the meantime. And uh, Rodney Danger, too. And, and Henry Danger. He Why do I keep on saying Because Rodney? you're thinking of Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, that's right, uh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Oh, 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 Gesundheit. Oh, gosh, that pink eye is you know, <laughs> giving him the sneeze. I have been trying to get onto DC Plus or DC, DC Universe. DC Universe. Yes. And for some reason, it keeps sending me, it keeps saying I need to put in my Roku number. And oh. It only gives me a four digit number, and my Roku number is like six digits. So it won't let me change it. You, need you to think call, Alex going to fix it? You need this? to call like, Calpurnia Adams. <laughs> okay. Calpurnia Adams is the tech whiz she of the world. She knows everything. Because I don't want you to think that I haven't watched it because I'm ignoring oh, you. I've been trying to do it. James. And I'm trying to. It's uh, not necessary. No, but I love <laughs> yeah. Doom Patrol and I love oh, DC. Oh, so. thanks. Oh, good. Good, yeah. good. Then I think you'll like the show a lot. James, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Um, I have been reading for... Uh, God, the past two months, I, I've been reading uh, a book about Bunny Melon. Yes. Uh, remember, we, we spoke last time right, you were right, here about right. Bunny Melons of the Pittsburgh of the Melon. Pittsburgh Melons, yes. yeah. Um, Bunny Melon was the great a great socialite in the mid-century. It's a rich white lady. Rich white lady, yes. She was Dead, um, Jackie yes, Kennedy's, yeah. a great mentor to Jackie Kennedy. She taught her about flowers and mm -hmm. antiques, and she sort of helped her mold her into the person she, she, she was. She designed the uh, current White House Rose Garden. She created yeah. the, white, the, the yeah, Rose Garden the in the White House with Jackie Kennedy. Yes. Um, it's uh, like I said, it's one of those 1,000 page biographies that goes through every day of her life, and I love those. Oh my I gosh. can just sink into that. It is. It just makes me so happy. It to spoke learn. to your inner rich white lady and my inner white lady. She was a bit of a bitch. She was a character. Mm -hmm. She would be friends with you. She had great style. Yeah. But she would be friends with you for decades and then just drop you like oh, yeah. And yeah. You, you had like no a drop, idea why. Like a hot rock. Yeah. Like yeah. like out of the blue, like mm -hmm. she just wouldn't accept your phone calls right, anymore. Right. 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 There are two stories. She's that I, mercurial. Mercurial. In fact, I have the word mercurial right there. Oh, oh did yeah. you know what her style um, sentence was? Her style what? philosophy? Nothing should be noticed. I wrote that down too. Oh my God, you guys, Why? The crystals, the Why crystals. would James be wanting to talk about someone who said nothing, nothing should, should be, be noticed? noticed? No, 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 because I love those types of women. I will never be that type of woman. I will never be a part of I know you come pretty woman. close in this kind of like monochromatic black look today. With She's the pink got eye. pink eye though. Yeah. Yeah. But, but there are two stories that I wanted to tell. 
right. The first was um, she had a, a stepson and who was going to, in, in his teens. He was going through sort of a, a rough period, mm. and they got into an argument. And he took – she had a, a tea set that was cabbages and with little cabbage leaves. And he took one of the cabbage leaf plates and threw it against the wall, and she was furious. Well, decades later, she's 103 years old. Mm-hmm. He's in his 70s, mm-hmm. and they they get along beautifully. And they're best friends. They're, you know, they're <laughs> the plate-throwing era yeah, is over. They, yeah, they, but they, they, they get along great. And when she dies, he thinks as her only heir that she's going to leave him hundreds uh, – you know, $100 million yeah, or yeah, like that. Yeah. She left him one cabbage leaf plate. Ooh. Because oh, the, the one that he broke. And so he, he oh. was cut out of the will, and he got a and cabbage leaf. And that was leaf. her fuck you. That was her like, fuck you. Oh my 70 God. years later, Hadn't she still let go of it. Up. She that did not fantastic. let go of it. Which I, love I love someone who bears a grudge. <laughs> right? The other story, it was, this is very early on. That's it, evil. <laughs> it's so good. That is How evil. did he take it? Uh, he was, he was <laughs> you know, a little devastated. He threw I another imagine. plate, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She had a jet plane in her backyard. Yard yes. in the runway, and um, one time her neighbor saw the the plane take off off Martha's Vineyard, fly into the distance, all the way into the horizon, and then it came back <laughs> and landed. And later he said, "Was there engine trouble? What happened?" She said, "No, I forgot my scarf." <laughs> She used to send people produce from her plane, use her plane to like, oh, my tomatoes are like <laughs> yes. absolutely oh, glorious yeah. this season. You must have them. Would use her plane to fly people produce. I love it. I love it. She's just um, a fascinating woman. So, yes. This Nothing should be noticed. She said also, she said, I, I really didn't. What is it? She was at church. And, and then she said, I don't really come to pray. I come to talk with God because he's a dear, dear friend of mine. Oh, I yes. love that. Yeah. She was just very elegant and very piss elegant. I love yeah. that. Um, and when she died, her um, estate was at Sotheby's. The, the, the auction was mm-hmm. at Sotheby's. And it was one of those, like, Marlene de Dietrich, the sales. Duchess of Windsor. Right, right, right. Where it was like you want to look at their stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. It was like, you know, tens of thousands of people came traipsing through. Because so right. like, she had, you know, she would have... Um, Jeweled uh, brooches in the shape of bunny rabbits, like sure. with, with you know uh, emeralds and rubies mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and emerald glass grass and stuff. So it's just a fascinating. That's fantastic. bananas. Yeah. Okay, you can get that on Amazon. Yes, where all good books are sold. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I bunny. <laughs> bunny <laughs> boiler. <laughs> no, what is it called? What is it called? What is it's, it called? It's just bunny melon, oh. like a life or something oh like God. that. <laughs> okay, that's nice. Number eight. Are you, are you a Marmite baby? Oh, I've never tasted it. I'm oh, kind of scared. Oh but you know. bring some for us. Maybe did you? Peanut butter? I did. Oh, okay. Marmite. Did you bring? Did you bring it? Uh, introducing for the first time. In the, okay, Marmite was introduced what? Uh, 1906. And, no, it's, di- and it's different from Vegemite. Oh, absolutely, it is. For the, the pot is a different shape, and okay. it's, it's it's yeast though. It's yeast extract. Now, I thought, that, I thought oh. Marmite was something that was around in Victorian times. Well, 1902 oh. is pretty Victorian. Oh. It was invented by oh, sorry, dear. It was invented by a chemist, a German scientist. I'm sorry, Justus Liebig. Yeah. Yep. It would take a German to come up with edible it yeast. It is so <laughs> yeah. delicious. All right, let's, let's Marmite try on toast. Okay, well. For the first time in their history, they are introducing a new product. They have never actually launched anything other than Marmite. Mm. They are now launching Marmite peanut butter. I can tell you that I've actually had Marmite peanut butter. Is it you like, just is put it the peanut butter and then you put the Marmite on. And is you it like peanut Marmite. butter with like Cheeto, a kind it's of a like Cheeto a taste? It's like a savory peanut yeah, butter. Yeah. It's just got a little sharpness. But the other really interesting thing that they're doing this year, because it's Easter, mm-hmm. they have launched a Easter egg. <laughs> oh, yeah. that is disgusting. So, look, yeah. As you can see, this has been broken into because I was extremely hungry. This is Marmite. The love it, hate it. You just have to try it. That's right. Okay. It's the Marmite wow. Easter egg. Okay, so we're giving them a, a big free commercial here. I know. Well, on well, on well, Radio well, Andy. So look, are we going to get free okay, stuff? Okay, break a bit there. I've eaten some of this it. Is wait, a, this is wait, a, yes, a that is Marmite chocolates. For those of you watching, James is about to put some in his mouth. It tastes more chocolatey than you, Steve. You're right, yeah. isn't it? it yeah. The marmite isn't that strong. No, no. But you can. It, no. That's you how you trap people it. into like, eating nutritional yeast. So you, it it, it actually has been stinking up my office for a few there's days. A, I do though. smell the. There's, I do smell a, it. There's a there's a there's a yeasty aftertaste. Yes. Oh, there is. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. There, yeah. There, yeah, there, there's, there's the bite. <laughs> there's a top note of yeast. <laughs> and oh, yes, yeah. it's absolutely the the slang or the the slogan. I mean, the slogan for Marmite is "love it or hate it." They've actually it has well, been yeah, like one. 
No. I'm, it has I'm been not loving the aftertaste. Uh, you're not loving it? Mm -hmm. no. no. It has been one of the most brilliant marketing campaigns of any product ever. In fact, uh, Marmite is now the number, <laughs> the, <laughs> the number two spread in the United Kingdom because they've embraced this polarizing thing and run with it. And what is it about you people? Yeah, what <laughs> is it about you people? <laughs> yeah, with your, with your, with your tomatoes that? at breakfast uh, and your beans as ooh, a side breakfast that. dish. Fried yeah, you do eat beans like, at yeah, breakfast, don't yeah, you? That yeah. seems a little... And kippers. And blood like, in sausage. Advice. And uh, blood sausage and cold toast. Before you cold go too toast. far, though, Marmite is now owned by Unilever. You know, the people who make dishwashing liquid and yes. things like that. Well, that's what that taste was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't yeast. It was taste. Uh, mm -hmm. They yeah. like also introduced this year a pot noodle egg, which I wasn't able to get my hands pot on. Noodle a, pot noodle egg? A pot noodle egg. A pot noodle egg. Like uh, Easter egg. You know, like these things at Easter, they have the eggs in the stores. No, and our pot, pot noodles, noodles are like... A cup of noodles. Yes, yes, exactly. Oh, I thought he was talking about a cannabis noodle or something, like a, a, a <laughs> CBD ramen. That would That's be good. That's next door. Yeah, all no, right. But, um, uh, the pot noodles, I, I do see the commercials sometimes on YouTube, and the people all, I love my pot noodles, and I had no idea what it was until someone. Pot noodles. Yeah. I can learn something new every day. So happy Easter, everyone. You knew a lot about Bunny Melon, but nothing about Marmite or the Easter egg. You see Marmite, Bunny Melon, and worst celebrity cooks. My life has changed mm -hmm. in just a ma <laughs> matter of minutes. minutes. Yeah. So we got to take a quick break. Oh, we'll gosh. be right back. Blake, have you got a question? I do. I have one, but I'm not sure if it's too easy because I don't really know. Belly Mon Bunny Melon. Bunny so Melon. I'm going to ask it. If it's too easy, I've got another one. All right. All right. Bunny Mellon expressed interest in this presidential candidate because he reminded her of President Kennedy. Oh, uh, I know who it is. I know, I know the answer. Okay. Oh. I'm not supposed to shout it out, though. <laughs> no, no. But we'll have the answer when we come right when back. When she That's called right. his office with an offer to help, her name was not recognized and the call went unreturned. <gasps> really? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. And here's the second question Okay. Who gave Bunny Mellon's eulogy at her funeral and who sang? Oh, wow. Uh, James, you kind of got to that point yeah, of the book. Well, yeah. so I haven't finished it. Mm. Mm. All right. Okay. So we're over halfway through this season of RuPaul's Drag Race. Thursdays, 8 p.m., VH1, and on WoW Presents Plus. What is WoW Presents Plus, I hear you ask? <laughs> Cheaper than a cup of a latte. <laughs> Tell it us all about it. Is, it's our very own streaming service. Three ninety nine a month, as James says. Less than just, well, it's the same price. Just yeah. one latte. Yeah. 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 Represents Less than a cup of pot noodles. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. a yeast egg. Or a yeast uh, egg. You're listening yes. to the Wire Report on Radio and Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back. I'm Fenta Bailey here with... Alec Mapa. That's right. Standing in for Tom. Mm -hmm. And James St. James. Hello, darling. With Pink Eye. Yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh. It's, 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 I don't really. I think we need to clarify that okay. I don't really it's, have it's pink, pink eye. It's pink makeup. It's, it's pink yes, makeup, yes. and maybe my but eyes looks, are a little bloodshot. It looks deliberate. It looks like, oh, I'm doing a smear of pink. It's like, it's, <laughs> just to be provocative. Very pink. Uh -huh. pink. Really, it's like, yeah, I can't yeah. take my I am eyes not off contagious, you. is what yeah, I want to yeah, clarify yeah. here. It's a little well. Daryl Hannah in Blade Runner. Like, you need that kind of like King Tut platinum blonde wig. Yeah. So we're counting down the top 10 things that make us go. Yes. Wow. 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 We've reached no. number. Oh, we oh, wait. oh yeah, I we have to answer the question. Okay, to all right. Question. All right, Blake. All, all right. right, the question was, Bunny Mellon expressed interest in this presidential candidate because he reminded her of President Kennedy. When she, but when she called his office with an offer to help, her name was not recognized, and the call went unreturned. I do, I do know who, who, was I know who is. it is, and it was. Um, but she got into a lot of trouble, yeah. sort of late yeah. in life, because yeah. of her support. With yes. the, he was a scandal. He was a, he very scandalous. Mm -hmm. So who was that? Go ahead. It was Edwards. Yeah, John Edwards. It was John Edwards, and it found out that she was she didn't have any kind of opinion on the mistress, and was giving the money to hush it up and everything. Because she and, was, you know, oh, her husband yeah. had many mistresses. Yeah, and she's she like that was she was an old school, yeah. and that she's was like I don't care. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, All right, and second question, who gave Buddy Mellon's eulogy at her funeral? No, and I don't know. Aretha and Franklin. And who sang? Aretha Franklin gave the eulogy and sang. Really? Yes. Huh. No. No? <laughs> oh, God damn it. Frank Langella. I was close. Okay. Gave the eulogy. and He was very society. Frank He's Langella, Aretha Franklin. So I was kind of like doing my Long, la, Island, la, la, la. Long Island medium kind of like. Yeah. Anagrammy. Yeah. 
And then Bette Midler sang The Rose. Oh, oh that's nice. I wonder if Bette knew. She must have known I her. I guess yeah, they, they must have friends. hung out. But also when you're rich, you can get anybody to show up at it's anything. It's true. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, Frank Langella is one of the, I think he was friends with Jackie O, too. And he was? Yeah, he was. he's sort of very society. When more. I was a kid, he was very famous for playing Draclea yes. on Broadway. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And he also played it in the movie. Yeah, he was very sexy. Mm -hmm. Swarthy gentleman, mm. Italian. Oh. Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, presidential number, candidates, yes. I'm number seven. Number seven. Uh, With the long, historic announcement of our very first out gay presidential candidate, Pete Buttigieg. Love him. But I call Say him Booty Judge. Boot Edge Edge. Like he has it on a thing phonetically sounded out in his office, Boot Edge Edge. And I, you know, I kind of have an Obama feeling about him mm. because I remember. Uh, uh, see, hearing Obama speak at the Democratic National Convention and going, this guy has everything, but he's black. Hey, can we win with a black guy? And now I'm feeling the same thing with uh, Pete. But what? About, like, can we win with... Um, but? Is, do you have a, a One you, Direction but? ringtone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is perverse. <laughs> but, he's um, but he's gay. But he's gay. But he's gay, but... You know, he speaks seven languages. I know. He's Did a, you he's see a, when, uh, when Notre Dame was burning down? Yes. And he spoke to the French people in French. He spoke to French. the French people in French. Oh. He yeah. studied was, Arabic. He was in the Navy after he'd done his Rhodes Scholarship at 26 because he was like, I feel like I'm at a disadvantage not having served my country. He's going, I want the social experience of meeting people who are different from me. And he goes, and I feel that that's what's missing in America today mm -hmm. is that we don't know each other. Right. And he felt like really in true altruism being of service and by getting to know people of different you know socioeconomic strata and by faiths and yeah, yeah. yes by mm -hmm. by um uh joining the the navy also he's like a gay person who's also a religious person yes. mm -hmm. which you know which, i mean that's that's a big one because yeah. i don't know that you can win without being right. you know and he spoke to pence he was like you know if you have a problem with my sexuality you really have a problem with my creator uh, yes, in, in oh, Pence was furious wow. about that. Oh, wow. And yet, wow. how many points did he get for yeah, that? For yeah, yeah. And he's like, how did you become a cheerleader for uh, the prostitute presidency, the porn star presidency? He mm. said you that. Know? Yeah. He His husband's just darling, um, mm. Chasten Buttigieg. I love Chasten, He yes. reminds me of all the law students I had sex with at NYU, <laughs> where you kind of like you get drunk with somebody, you end up at their place, Wait, and you're you like- you were having sex with law students? Tons, tons. You studied law? Yeah, ask anybody who went to NYU. Um, no, well, I went to no, you. I, I didn't. Know. I was in They had the gay dudes. law school dances. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, and so I would go to all of those, and then I'd go home with somebody, and I'd think that okay, there's nothing sexy or you know sexual about this guy, and then they'd get you home, and then it would be a different story. Mm -hmm. He reminds me of that. He kind of like holds his cards very close. He doesn't come across as really sexual. So he's like gay enough, but he's like not he too gay hot. for America. No, he's very handsome. He's, he's hot. He's very handsome. I'm he wondering how tall he is though, because only tall people become president. Oh, yeah. That well, might be a, 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 a very I, superficial liability. Jimmy Carter was tall? You're, be, you're telling us to rap on the first no, gay president, he, <laughs> presidential candidate? No, no, but, but he does. He checks all the boxes, okay, yeah, every yeah. single one and of them. And he does. Yeah, and yeah. he's just, he's, he's, he's darling. Yeah. I would listen great to speaker. him on Rachel Maddow. Yeah, I was, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. his coming out story. I was moved to tears. Yeah. Yeah. I was driving along my car yeah. listening to it this morning, and yeah. I just started blubbing. And right? he's reaching across the aisle. He yes. is, uh, is going to be doing a, can. He's doing a Fox News town hall. Right. Well, Bernie yeah. did the uh, Fox uh, right, Town Hall right. and did exceedingly well. Good. And I think he's going to do really well, too, because I am you at this point Bernie just so well. embittered and crazy and anti-Trump. I can't yeah. but imagine he's, But anyone. he's cha changing the narrative about even yes. about Trump, and I'll do this really, really quickly. He said that there's all these stories, and every day our, our constant narrative is the press and politicians is we're trying to convince you that Trump is a bad guy. And I have to tell you that I'm from the Midwest, and they know that he's a bad guy. They didn't vote for him because he's a good guy. They voted for him because they needed to get something done, and they thought that he was the one who was going to be able to do it. So he's not alienating the Trump voters. He's kind of reaching out to him, which I think you is know, very so wily. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting because it seemed like Beto O'Rourke was going to have the same momentum that Peter. Uh, it's Pete so has. early. It is. It's it is. so early. But Remember when we like thought Jeb Bush was going to win? I mean, uh, yeah. 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 What I fear is the dirty I tricks want this Republicans Easter egg will. To go away. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it needs have it. Take yeah. it with you. I fear what the Republicans will do in terms of dirty tricks. I mean, that's how they yeah. got rid of Gary Hart. I know, it but was, you know, he was, already, you know, has. His name is Booty Judge, mm. and he's gay. He right. has he's gay, and he uh -huh. has the words Pete and Butt in his name. So like, what? Uh, 
<laughs> they got nowhere to go with it. Yeah. All right. I mean, okay. not unless some kind of exceptional Folsom Street Fair video comes out. You know, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. <laughs> and even at this point, who cares, right? I mean, Trump has mistresses. Trump I know, but we live in this kind of like, like L.A. bubble. I don't know what people are like mm. outside of this. They might just go, you know, I'm not going to go to the, I'm not going to vote for a gay guy. Well, I was saying the same thing about Bernie that, that we, nobody was ever going to vote for a, a Jewish socialist right. or with uh, Obama as an African American. I mean, right. what? I what? Can't see him seething over. Oh, okay. No, we got to move on. Seething at me. It's my fault. We got to move on. I'm not moving things along. All right, move I'm things just, along. Tom Campbell is just kind of like follows I, Blake and goes, no, okay, like. Tom Campbell always really? cracks the whip. Oh. Yes, exactly. Talk, Tom goes for 40 minutes without, without <laughs> taking oh, a breath. All right, okay. defend himself. All right. It's not here. Uh, Pete, I love you. We'll be in touch soon. I'm friends with both of them on Instagram. Oh, my God. Follow you guys. Okay, number six. Number six, James. Number six. Page Six is reporting that Carly Simon is writing a memoir about her good friend Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. We're keeping with, I, with the Jackie O. Why do I find o. this so funny? Well, it isn't funny when you think <laughs> about it. <laughs> it's not funny at all. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? Uh, this is that she's writing an intimate and vulnerable memoir mm. about her famous friend. Um, uh, she's doing it with Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. <laughs> um, it will be coming out October 22nd. Um, she met uh, Jackie Onassis at a summer party of course in the she Hamptons, did. <laughs> in, in Martha's Vineyard, yeah. and, became, and began an improbable but lasting friendship, is what they said. Um, uh, you have a, 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 a an unrelenting obsession with rich white ladies. I do. I yeah. do. I, What's I, that about? I, I, well, it's, you know, when I was younger, and is I it first, aspirational? It is a yeah, little bit. Right, when right. I moved to New York in the '80s, mm -hmm. it was the, the the ladies who lunched, the social cycle, yeah, the Cornelia yeah, yeah, yes, and Nan Kemper. It was yeah. Nan Kemper. Yeah. It was Pat Buckley. Sure. It was Brooke Astor. Yeah. It was uh, you know all of those um, women. But what I, were you mm -hmm. doing downtown with us? Well, lot, that, well, that was just it. I was downtown looking up at the stars. Oh dear! And I would go home at night and I would read my details and I would read W and I would just I would compare town and, and country and you know I would always compare and contrast and say that Rudolph and Diane were the Donald and Ivana and mm -hmm. there was you know uh, Olympia was who was the lady Dukakis. who used to do the I did a rod the Mary Lou Whitney okay and she would dress in like hoop skirts and things all right, all right. I, I, anyway we're, we're, we're just getting a little off track mm -hmm. now the thing that's interesting about Carly Simon Carly is and Jackie that we don't I didn't even know they knew each other well they do mm -hmm. because Carly Simon is the Simon in Simon & Schuster. Her father founded Simon & Schuster, so she was an heiress, and she was what, a daughter of the city. She did was, you know that? No, I had no idea. Did you know that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is from the Dreyfus did Fund? The, yeah, billions. No. Billions. billions. She father. comes from yes. a very rich family. Well, and Daryl Hannah, too, is um, a billionaire is, from, uh, from her family. the mother of Hannah Montana. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, but um, so she, so it's not un Daryl unlikable. Daryl Hannah comes from a, a yeah. rich family. Oh yeah, yeah, a pharmaceutical family too, wow. I believe. Um, uh, but Bunny um, Mellon was pharmaceutical. She was the Listerine heiress. Yes, she was. Yes, yes. Oh yes. she always had fresh breath. Found of not. James, you have a competitor in the rich white ladies department. <laughs> Actually, someday you come over yes. to it because I have a whole section <laughs> of socialites from the 20s and 30s. Fabulous. And so I, I, I present my, as my a library. gay Filipino man, but I identify as a rich white lady. Uh, anyway, so it's just fascinating. <laughs> that, um, uh, it is, it's weird to me that she would write for she would go to Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux as opposed to going to Simon and Schuster, where oh you know. God. But she is she, she comes from Trader. literary. Royalty. Has she written any books? She did. She wrote a book called Boys and Trees or something like that in. Mm. the 90s, which she also had an album called Boys and Did Trees. she ever write a song for Jackie O? No, she, might... she did. It's what the was name it? of the, the You're book. so vain? Yeah, no, it's no. the name of the book. Uh, Let the River Run? Huh. Yeah. It's, uh, Marry uh, Me? It just says That's Maddie's the Lemon's way Jackie I've book. always it? heard it should be. Touched by the sign. Oh, and she was touched by the sun. Touched right. by the sun. Well, speaking of touched by the sun, <laughs> at number five. <laughs> number five. On trend puffer jackets because when the sun isn't out and you're not touched by the sun, what do you wear? You wear a puffer jacket. A puffer jacket. Just in time for May gray and June gloom here in sunny Los Angeles. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> How did puffer jackets become a thing? Because I distinctly remember looking at puffer jackets, thinking they are so ugly. So I ugly. will never wear a never. puffer jacket in my life. And then the next thing, they I'm reading everywhere. the Guardian, and Guardian says. Puffer jackets, on trend, they're the thing. And I was like, you're right. But I got stealth. mine at Uniqlo like yes. years ago because it was inexpensive. Yes. But, you know, and it would fold up. Yeah, it was on fold. sale for $37. But, I didn't you know, know it was on of, trend. You know, Norma Kamali is famous for her puffer jacket. She is. is. Yes. But like the big, gigantic, yeah, it like, was a sleeping stay bag. plump, it was stay a sleeping, fat. Yeah, they look like the marshmallow was. man. 
it actually was two sleeping bags sewn together. Yes. Did you know that? that no. That's our first. Yes. But they are so unattractive, and nobody looks good in a puffer jacket. It puts on 20 pounds, and yes, if you don't it, need 20 pounds. Yes, but if it's sub-zero in New York, and it's a polar vortex, you will go down the street in a sleeping bag. I guess bag. we can't wear fur anymore. Right. But it, it, one of the examples of how a person can look just horrible in a puffer jacket is Andre Leon Talley. Have you seen um, him in that red puffer? Right, it right. adds 140 pounds yeah. to him, uh, yeah. and we doesn't but, need that. No, he doesn't. He's also wearing either that or a graduation gown of some kind. <laughs> or, or, yeah. or a yeah. choir robe. Yeah, a choir yeah. robe. Yeah, it's, like, it's like the tent isn't making you look, it's not slimming. No. no. But James, it's, it's funny to hear you decry the puffer jacket, and here you are sitting in one. Well, also, oh, who am I to fight trends? Who you, am I to fight fashion? You have brilliantly found the Do solution. Do you have any regrettable um, trend that you followed at one time? Girl. I mean, I have no, one. nothing but the nothing. Pizza slice. Well, I always but, make fun of him for having his Lebre pierced oh, right here. Well, I didn't know. Oh. In the 90s, I had a yes. goatee. Yes. And I um, I had, the goatee was awful. Not the goatee, the thing, the ring. Oh, what the you what? Oh, oh, what's I happening? Why? Oh. And it sort of bent down. If, if no. you want to see it, you can see it. watch it in the shockumentary, I think. In the shockumentary yeah. party monster where James looks like death. Slightly <laughs> warmed up. <laughs> no, I did. You know, I had uh, for a long time too. When I was uh, before I shaved my head, and I was losing the hair, and it was rapidly, mm-hmm, you know, going mm-hmm, back. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was in denial. And I remember parting it in the comb middle. Over, kind of. I a, had a comb. Yeah, yeah. I had a magenta comb over, oh, and yes. it was just god. That's awful. a great oh, drag name. Please welcome to the stage, Miss Magenta Comb Over. <laughs> <laughs> it was James also very uh, riffraff from the Rocky Horror oh, Show. Really? Uh, he he t- also told me he almost got a uh, tribal tattoo. I did. I had. It's a travel the, tattoo. The, you tribal. Know, it was awful 90s. It was like an interlocking, like, tribal. Like, and I was almost going to do a Frankenstein oh. going around oh, my neck, attached to God, you of, didn't. Oh, my of, God. Uh, my regrettable fashion was uh, parachute pants with jazz shoes. <gasps> there <gasps> is Boy, nothing wrong with parachute pants. White pa- uh, parachute pants with white jazz shoes. <laughs> uh, I think you yeah, should bring why, that back. Why, I think that's hot. Why? Why not? No. <laughs> oh, no. But look. The thing about the puffer jacket, yes, it was invented by Eddie Bauer in 1936, okay. but then Charles James, <gasps> yes, Charles really? James invented it too. He oh. did a, a all right, of, pick one. We, is it Norma Kamali? Is it Charles James? Charles, is it well, Eddie, Eddie Bauer, Bauer? Is it Smokey the Bear? Eddie Who is Bauer it? Eddie Bauer was first in 1936, but then Charles James in 1937 created this beautiful. He called it a pneumatic jacket. It oh. was something like, like looked like something out of Metropolis. Mm. I went down a wormhole last night learning all about Charles James. Oh, and he's just fascinating, I mean, Speaking isn't of he? like ladies and he I don't know who Charles James, James is. Well, Charles James, James was a designer yeah. from what, the 20s? 30s, 20s. 30s. Was he a homosexual? Yeah, a, a bit, yeah, a, a yeah. bit of a homosexual, but he um, lover of Cecil really Beaton. like Balenciaga or um, oh. someone who really took you know, construction okay. of gowns yes. and really t- sort of turned it inside Love out. It. He was like the McQueen of his day. He really right? was, yeah. yeah. And he also, um, I don't know if you know this, but he was a great friend of our Corey Hayes. I did not know. Yes, that. and our Corey Hay, he left him all of his designs. Oh, he was, wow. he was lover of Cecil Beaton at Harrow. I believe that. And then he tried to hang himself because he's infatuated with a boy and his across the hall neighbor cut him down. Who do you think his across the hall neighbor was? Aretha Franklin. <laughs> John Cocteau. <laughs> Stop it. That John is John crazy. John Cocteau just comes to your rescue, cuts you down. Oh my God, the morning I've had. They I wouldn't be here if John Cocteau <laughs> didn't live right next door and heard my ankles kicking against the wall. He thought it was just another wild Tuesday night for me. <laughs> <laughs> there is a fabulous Cecil Beaton picture of all those bells, the debutantes, yes. in their gorgeous silk gowns. Mm-hmm. It took a whole day to shoot that picture we'll post on the wear report they're, they're all, all charles, charles james, james. Uh, there was just a recently wasn't he the met ball yes yeah he was the met ball uh yeah they had a whole met ball at charles yeah they james. did they, they, now i know who he is and not to be oh, confused God. with james charles the, YouTube, <laughs> the makeup the social influencer all right we have to all move right. on okay we're gonna move on we're a little over one month away from what uh RuPaul's Dragon. Oh, RuPaul's I thought you were going to say the end of Go- Game of Thrones. Oh, I thought well, you were going to say the too. end of the world. The rapture has actually been mm-hmm. May twenty fourth, twenty fifth, twenty sixth. Get your tickets. I love RuPaul. If you've if you've never gone to RuPaul's DragCon, go. It is a great event for kids. Yeah. Is, kids right. love it because it's like Halloween. My, your kid my kid grew up going yeah. to uh, DragCon, and what he went one year not in drag, and he was like, "No one's looking at me," and he was absolutely. <laughs> 
and we <laughs> live it about it. So he was like maybe 12 years old at the time. I had him styled by a, 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 a costume designer. He looked like a 12 year old girl going to a, a, um, a Taylor Swift concert. He had I like a glitter it. page boy cap, a news cap, and, and a long purple wig. And everybody took pictures with him. He, he was. Oh, happy. that's he was so, so cute. happy. Yeah. That is so yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Get your tickets at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. Thank you. And my son Nolan. Who's twelve? Works the booth. He does. Logging you much? Yes, really. He's been doing. It with Randy's dad does it too. It's an yeah. intergenerational oh, thing. Oh wow! Um, yeah. Will he pass me a free plate? I always want to so we one good. of those yeah. plates. Plates are cute, aren't they? Yeah, they're they really cute, but they're very expensive. Some arrangement. So cheap. I'm sure we good. All right. All right. Okay, I've Blake, got a question. question. Yep. Okay. Carly Simon's "You're So Vain" was sampled by which pop diva in her 2001 song "Son of a Gun"? Carly also made a cameo in the video. Huh. Huh. I thought you were going to ask who it was about. Oh, I know who it's about. Well, we we're, we're getting the rappy, rippy, rappy sign. Sorry, we're getting this one of these. It's got one of my favorite lines of all time. You, you flew your jet to Nova Scotia That's to see too. a total eclipse of the sun. Total eclipse of the what sun. What a fucking amazing lyric that mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to The Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with Alec. And James St. James. Hi. And Blake. Hi. We just had a little question. We did. The break. Carly Simon's You're So Vain was sampled by which pop diva in her 2001 song, Son of a Gun? She, Carly also cameoed in the video. Huh. Well, I'm 2001, Stop I'm me. saying Stop Christina me. Aguilera. Mm. Hmm. Miley Cyrus. Joan Osborne. Janet Jackson. Oh, what? Oh. Oh, from That's I weird. think her uh, Re- uh, the vel- red velvet, no, the well, velvet it was rope, after that, oh, the red gosh. velvet cake, the red velvet cake album, yeah. I believe. Speaking oh, of wow. pop stars, speaking Alec, of pop stars, number Mad- four. I have- number four. I have number four, which is Madonna. She's coming out with a new album entitled Madam X. It, it drops, uh, she announced it on Twitter on Saturday, April 13th, offering a preview of what's to come. In her post, Madonna wrote, and there's an audio of this too in her, in her video. Are you laughing at her? No, no, I'm not. I, I love <laughs> her. Laughing with but her. But I'm laughing with her at this point because <laughs> Madam X is a secret agent traveling around the world, changing <laughs> identities, fainting for freedom, bringing light to dark places. She's a cha cha instructor, a professor, <laughs> a head of state, a housekeeper, an equestrian, a prisoner, a student, <laughs> a teacher, a nun, a cabaret singer, a saint, a prostitute, <laughs> all in the house of love. See, this is how I, my, your imitation uh, of her. Yeah, is <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. Very good. Thank you very much. So I, it, it's not enough. Like in this digital age of, remember when there used to be a Madonna season? It was kind of like every September we'd get a new Madonna, right. or every spring we'd get a new Madonna. And what's it going to be? Is it going to be bondage <laughs> Madonna? Is it going to be 1930s Madonna? Is it going to be Japanese Madonna? <laughs> now she's just putting all of them out <laughs> at once, throwing everything in the kitchen sink. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, a yeah. housekeeper. I'm a, pl- I'm I'm a plumber. Pl- 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 I'm a morgue cosmetician. I'm a panda trainer. I am an ASMR artist. You know, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an influencer. Yes, yeah. I'm an influencer. I, we, we I'm a cap on someone's tooth. <laughs> <laughs> but what is this? That she's smoking. Why is she smoking all of a sudden? She was never a smoker. She's never a smoker. That's weird. Yeah. In your, in her, your latter oh, years. Style. Gonna... I, the, I've seen a little tiny video clip, and I yes. think she's typing at a typewriter in black gloves. Maybe. And I thought the typing was a little slow. It's like, plonk. Yeah, plonk. yeah. <laughs> Madam X better hurry up with the typing. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I don't imagine Madonna has ever Madam spent X much time a, on a typewriter. Madam X isn't a typist. It wasn't <laughs> yeah. listed here in the manifesto. Um, when was the last Madonna album you actually bought? Music. You get them all. You I love do. her. I, you love her. I, I, love, I love her. I love, I love everything. I love the institution of her, the fact that she still exists. Mm-hmm. And now I even love the fact that everyone beats up on her every time she does them. Yes. But I also do think there is a an element of absurdity to her that has always been that the I case. love. There's there's always when been an audacity r- about her that's, that's ridiculous. The audacity yeah. of hope. Yeah, yeah. The audacity You're of rapping. You're from Michigan. Yes, yeah, yeah, honey. Yeah, rolling around on her mother's grave in triple right, death, right, for example. Right. I mean, I can't wait to hear the music. I think the last album I really truly loved yes. was Confessions on the Dance Floor. Mine I was think it music. was music. Oh well, uh, the best single of all time. Music. 
Oh, no, yeah, that's that right. Come on. Yeah, that um, makes the big um, I did, I did. I think um, Ray of Light was, was I cherished Ray of Light. I just thought that was the coming together of mm. her sound and the producer. It was just so beautiful. And it she was, just, was and sort was of stripped gorgeous. away some of the artifice at that yeah. point, and I thought yeah. that was refreshing. Yeah. I mean, you Frozen. Listen, you, Frozen, Frozen, when your heart's not oh. broken. You're doing all the Jonas Ackerlin mm. videos I right say that to my husband often. You're frozen when your heart's not open. <laughs> it feels up to me. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the power of goodbye. Oh, yes. Candy perfume yeah. girl. Uh-huh. I mean, there's just so many great tracks what in that album. Like yeah. 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 Vogue, Vogue is great. great. That wasn't on Ray of Light. I know. Yeah. I'm just but also, like, she's always been a singles queen. Yeah. But really. we owe a great debt of gratitude to her Jeez. as a pop icon who shone the spotlight on our community and would always stood up for her Brits and Kevin O'Quinn and yes. Keith Herring and we used, used to yeah. talk about her every single week on this show and she's been away for and a you've while. abandoned her oh, yeah. shame so on you thank you for bringing her all right back. there should be a Madonna moment and I, I was the one to kind of bring it back right. I'm just saying Madam X what have we got at number three Jeff number three we are segueing wildly at this point. We're back to the can- fat boy cannibal killer uh, that we've been following <laughs> for years on this show now. The, I, do you know this story? No. It's okay. something is it to like, chew on. Is it like Bat Boy? No, 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 no. This is a on. real story. This okay. happened a few years ago right. in Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. And it was a, a kid having lunch with his father. Yes. And out of the blue, he, ju- he jumps up and starts screaming and shouting and frothing at the mouth and not making a lick of sense. He says, I'm going home. He storms out of the <laughs> restaurant. Is this the kid or the, the, the kid? The kid. Okay. The kid. He's a teenager. All right. He, um, he, he goes and he's, instead of going home, he goes in another direction. And when the police find him, he has attacked a couple that was sitting in their their um, garage, yes, and he uh, was attacking them with garden hose sure. and everything, and, and, and he killed the he killed them both, I believe, with a hose, with, with all sorts of uh, just things that he found accoutrements, accoutrements, yes, all kind of bunny melon the, garden utensils. And when the police came, he was eating the man's face, and the, the police were um, he was growling and barking like a dog, mm-hmm. and not like, again not making any sense. And um, when they had to put, taser him, they kept tasered him like twenty times. Oh, and it did not work. He was just kept going and going and going. When they got him, he still had bits of flesh all in his mouth Golly. and everything. Now, human flesh, you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we're back. Uh, and it, so was he's in jail. Well, yes, yeah. they, yes. they finally managed okay. to get him. But he had also, before they got him, he had taken some like garden um, something and drank it. Like Drano. Oh, so Drano, Drano, Drano or something. Okay. And so okay. his so his um, throat uh, like disintegrated. Oh, really? Gosh. Yeah, and so he I couldn't talk, and they couldn't get him to see. He was like in a coma, and then when he got out of it, he couldn't talk, and that's why he couldn't give any information. Testimony to them. because he couldn't speak. Yeah. Well, so now, there wasn't enough evidence with them with a mouthful of flesh over two <laughs> no, no, they just prone didn't know what people. To do with them. But now there's going to be a trial, and it starts in November. And uh, how's the, the Drano things, esophagus? How's that working? Uh, out? Yeah. How do you please? No, no. <laughs> but we have learned some interesting ah, things yeah. about him. Um, his uh, um, what's oh, his name? That's terrible. Uh, is he cute? Uh, Austin Hareff, yeah, he's a frat boy. He's really hot. Oh. Um, uh, but he, uh, fe- they, from the doctor's report, we've learned that he felt he had superpowers within him, and he was Jesus. He began walking around in slow, harmonious manners, believing he could fix people's problems. Wait, he, this is while he was eating people, no, or this afterwards? Bef- this is before. Before. Oh, yeah. okay. So he, he went came, off the rails a bit. Before. Yeah, he oh, yeah. Um, became pre- preoccupied with the Illuminati. Okay. Uh, oh. He was obsessed with um, Tony Robbins, Lincoln, and Krishna. Um, he sounds like Tony a paranoid Robbins? Tony Robbins. It's he sounds like un- a paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah. Yeah. In one um, instance, he claimed to have seen a demon. He believed the water was the source of his power, and it kept him oh. young. Uh, he um, started r- doing all these rat videos under the name Austy Frosty, which is sort of hot. Austy Frosty. Austy Frosty. Austy Frosty. He's gonna, gonna, and he's some, gonna, of lyrics, yeah. <laughs> some of she's, the lyrics. She's a cannibal <laughs> <laughs> from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> some of the lyrics was um, he wrote one about a girl's face being yummy. And, uh, oh dear! And then he wrote one of the lyrics was, "There's a new sheriff in town. He's gonna eat you and make you frown." Oh. Um, uh, can he speak now? I guess he can now. I guess he's sort of um, he's better. But um, it's just I think that is something that we're going to. It's a, it's a fascinating. Oh story. no! You got a crime scene of the person with the yeah. face. Well, yeah. no, that's, or is that him? That's him with the bits of flesh still. Oh, in his you mouth. know. Um, but the, the the weird thing about this is this isn't the first case of face eating in Florida. Yeah. A few years before that. There was a man who just a homeless been walking man somewhere. Is it, and, it was, removed, and it was bath salts. He removed well, all right? his clothes and had just set up on a homeless man on a sort of pedestrian bridge and was eating his face off. And the same. 
same thing happened. The police tasered him, and he wouldn't succumb. In the end, they had to shoot and kill him. So something is going on, and there were all these conspiracy theories that maybe About MK Ultra is doing some kind of um, weird communication thing, where they're programming people's minds or oh, they're experimenting. Or people, yeah. with, well, because people um, were saying that it, there's a drug called Flocka that is making everyone in Florida go bananas, hmm. and um, there's Flocka. Is that an anagram for something? Is no, that, no, no, is no. It's 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 like a, a really bad speed, and people yeah. are just like I as mean, opposed so, to the good kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could have yeah. a little talk yeah. later. Yeah. But um, so the Flocka and bath salts and right. things like that. But it isn't, and there was there was and no. And it makes you want to eat somebody's face. Well, no, no, but but there was no in in none of those cases were was there right. any flaca in them. They did all and the so, tests, and it was yeah, yeah, and so pe- that's what people their first thought was is that that's what it was. But um, it I'm thinking that it's the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, and it's just when we look back. Oh, on it in history, that was the beginning. Yeah, they this, started eating faces. and nobody was nobody was able. Well, to I don't know it. about you guys, but I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> eat your mom, I did. No, no, I would rather eat a, some, a human face <laughs> than the yeast. Well, egg. then what you need to do uh, is uh, number two. Number two. Take Number two. refuge in a hypodermic skyscraper. All right. Oh. There's another trend a lot. So okay. reading The Guardian again. I read The Guardian a lot. Actually, it's really good. Do you subscribe to The Guardian? But isn't The Guardian, Guardian, isn't it a bit uh, uh, right-wingy a little bit? No, it's left-wing, Joe. Is it? Yeah. I yes. can't read, so... <laughs> <laughs> but they occasionally have really good features. Okay, so who said you can never be too rich or too thin? Diana right? Breland. I, was it? Was no, it, was it, it uh, Duchess of Windsor. Windsor. Duchess yeah. of Windsor. Or my two. other favorite. I love the Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> she, you know, the Duchess would um had had made me. Buddy <laughs> Mellon. <laughs> Nothing should be noticed. She made her um, maids iron the money so that um so that it was uh, f- comp- perfectly flat. Oh my God! I love that. Iron anyway. the money. So, okay, so there's this trend in New York of these super, super duper thin skyscrapers. Needle yes. dick. Needle dick skyscrapers. Ne- oh, you put it so well. That's is it the one like, at Central Park? Yes. The one that, I, I think it's dreadful. I think it's hideous. There's, I think it's so awful. Park Avenue. That's the, fam- the yeah. famous one. And did you know that was inspired by a trash can? I actually looked it up because I thought the architect must be joking. But actually, there is a picture of a trash can, and it looks just like it's the hideous. Really? And do you know that they're being purchased? Mm. The units are being purchased by billionaires who yes. are never going to live there. Yeah. Well, well, the whole city is yeah, turning that, into that. that. It's just Nin- that they're just doing it like they're people from Dubai mm. and from Shanghai. Mm-hmm. The high rollers are buying them and not even occupying the space. It's like it's like those ghost cities in China. <gasps> Making you angry. Well, I did see a pictorial of what, what one of the insides looked like. And, <laughs> and I was you like, would live in it. All right. Mm. That would be very convenient. Because well, it's just one, after one Carnegie uh, Hall building per floor. Or, so or a quick through, uh, trip through the Bramble in Central Park. I could wash <laughs> up <laughs> nearby. <laughs> yeah, They're so thin that they're basically it's just mm-hmm. one person's home per floor. Have you ever stayed in Central Park I South? I never have. I would love to. So, uh, the, the penthouse goes for $95 million. That's for 432 Park 95 Avenue. 95 million. Then there's Central Park Tower and then there's also, yes, Central Park South. Mm-hmm. That that penthouse sold for two hundred and thirty eight oh, million. Oh, I did see that. I saw that recently. Yeah, the most expensive wow. home ever wow. sold. So you know, in New York they, City. Yeah, in the world. Actually. Do you get the whole floor? In the US, I mean, yeah, you get. Is a whole there a floor. washer dryer? I think situation. There is. I think there's a sink. And yeah, like there's that. a sink. Is there a bidet toilet? I'm That's sure a bidet. I love those. I grew up with a bidet. I love the, but, but the bidet toilet that the, that the Japanese have. Oh yeah, the, kind the ones the little, that talk to you the, the, and the, say the, 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 it sings to you. It has a little. When it says it says I just I noticed that there's something wrong with your poo. Yeah, I could sit on one of those for. Hours. <laughs> it's beautiful. But I can't well, imagine the the, the bidets in uh, in, in England the, in the back in the skyscraper. 1950s. Well, my dad was an architect, and he was very 60s, 70s kind of guy. But and were he they, did built they a split level home with a bidet, and everyone thought it was for washing I, their hands. I think there's. <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. But I can't imagine the bidet had warm water back we never then. Used, no, it was like it was like a sink. Oh, the Japanese have the warm water that's, kind. Yeah, it's so that's amazing. amazing. Sink, back to architecture. I think there's an there's an unfortunate trend. <laughs> Moving away from the bidets because yes, yes, I could yes. talk about the bidets okay. all day. Well, I, I want to talk about air s- okay. transferable development rights. Yes, that's what we want to talk about. There's 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 an unfortunate trend happening yes. in New York City uh, in terms of like an audacious use of space. Yes, like that new thing in the Hudson Yards, yeah. which is just the shell and vessel. the vessel. And there's no place to sit. You have to walk up 16 floors just, just to hang out, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's just kind of. And then this is another example of that. It's just kind of like well, it know, stinks. It's kind of like. Right, and you know how they did it because it actually comes out of preservation in the sense that uh, old buildings like Carnegie Hall, etc., mm-hmm. they were given preservation orders, right? Meaning they couldn't renovate or do anything, and to compensate for that, 
they were allowed to sell to go up. their air rights oh. above them. Oh, no, not They didn't sell the land. They sold the land, the air, above them to neighboring buildings. And that's how the developers were able to create multi-multi-story So structures. the owners of the other buildings are saying, I'm going to give you the view. Exactly. You can give me Next this X amount of says, dollars. Let me buy your air rights. Oh. And then I can build my tower. And in fact, you know, an early pro proponent of this I was, was Donald Trump, Trump. fucking Trump. Yeah. And that's the, um, I would say, I'm, it was Bob Teller, It was it? above the landmark Tiffany building on Fifth Avenue. I always and thought the Trump Tower was one of the ugliest the things I've ever seen. Building, yes. It was next to well, Tiffany's. he demolished that. Yes, which is but, a shame because that was one of the most beautiful buildings in New York. He bought Tiffany's air rights. And otherwise, it would have been a 20-story building. Yeah. But he was able to build. And so that's the story of, um, yeah, it's called... Uh, Transferable development, right? Well, so that, I quite like that. But TDR. you know what? It's going to be filled with face eating zombies shortly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <laughs> oh, right. enjoy the view now. We put a link yeah. uh, to the Guardian article on the Wow Report. Um, hey. What? Trixie Mattel, Moving Parts. It's a documentary. Is it? That we executive produce, World of Wonder executive produce, premiering at the Tribeca well, Film Festival. While the rest of us are napping. This one Thursday, over here. Just April never stop. And and never working, stop. Never Tribeca stops. Film. Com. How it's actually wonderful. really good. It's yeah. a beautiful film about the friendship between Trixie and Katya and the unraveling that occurred. Oh, dear. When they had their show, Trixie and Katya. Yeah. And it's yeah. at Hot Dogs Toronto 2, April 27th. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to reveal the number one thing that makes us And go, during the break, wow, wow, wow. you're going to tell me why you're making that face no, during the break. No, no, no. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Hey, welcome back to the Wow Report. We've been counting down <laughs> the top 10 things that make us go. Wow. wow! And we've reached that exciting moment where we reveal the number one thing. Number one. What is our number one thing? Paris is burning too. Uh, oh, that's not funny. Uh, yeah, uh, there ain't nothing uh, like a dame. Yeah. Oh, this is, you know, this is not so much <clears throat> exciting as it is just okay. tragic it's and just sad. Tragic and sad. And watching it, it was just, you were gutted. Watching, it was just, it was so sad. But then did you see um, the. Uh, the Parisians standing around singing. Yes, oh. yes. Ava yeah. Maria. I think that everybody kind of has a sentimental attachment they to do. that. You know, you always remember your first time in Paris yeah. and standing in front and taking the pictures and kind of the, you know, being, you know, it's it's the Gothic cathedral of all Gothic cathedrals and everything. Yeah. But there's two rules of, uh, oh, this people singing. Yeah. <laughs> It's I an mean, it's an earnest moment of the Parisians, <laughs> which is a rare thing. They're not rolling their eyes I, or sneering at anybody. I mean, just wait, you don't think that's beautiful? I, that I was very sad. Yeah, but I'm there's very... also on Twitter. There's talk about all the sacred spaces that Western people have destroyed throughout the ages: mosques, temples, the and, Library and, of and Alexandria. The, yes, yes, yes. The, and and the, all the whole all the Holy Land that we're digging through right now to to, to do our pipeline to do the you Keystone see Pipeline. What ISIS yeah, has been yeah, doing right. to it's, some of the holy places. It, and right. so to just kind of and single this one out is just kind of like that that gave me pause even and and i'm i'm not even i'm even not even that catholic but i i do have an affection for that right. edifice yeah, of course, well, yeah I mean, like, is, 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 like if something bad happened to the Saga sagrada familia in barcelona i'd yes. feel really bad no, about that beautiful because i'm a rich white lady and that's where i hang out from the 13th <laughs> century i mean yeah. if nothing else it's just 800 a bag. years old yes yeah but that spire i hate to spoil it for you was only 150 it years was being old. restored i don't care about the spire yeah. i mean i care well, about that was the money shot when it, uh, I know it was the, the money shop, but pits. everybody calm down. The majority of it is still standing. Um, yes. They they just got to rebuild the roof and the spire right. and and a wooden and, roof. and and um, uh, uh, there's somebody taking a selfie um, and and, um, and 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 repair some of the stained glass, which is what they've been doing every time I go to Paris. It's being repaired. So it's it's not going to look that like much that, different. It's like the fucking West Side Highway, which right. for 35 years has been yeah. under construction. It's the Winchester Mystery Cathedral. The it's Wilsh always Wilshire. been like, yeah. It, it, Wilshire, since I've been here, has died. Yes. Yeah, you yes. haven't yes. to so go down So everybody it. calm down. It's still standing. It's tragic and it's sad, but it will be rebuilt. But don't you think, hold on, because when you rolled your eyes about the, the, the Parisian <laughs> singing, that there's something so no beautiful. No one dies. No, no, no. But there's something so beautiful and pure about they couldn't do anything, so all they could do was sing 
sing Sit from their hearts. And, sing. And, and, and I think that's just beautiful. I think it's like when the Who's in Whoville when they lost all their presidents and uh, they came out on Christmas morning. See, that, sang, that makes a different story see? now, Jay. Yeah, see, now exactly. I'm touched. Wah, I, yeah. wah, 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 when you brought up the Grinch who stole Christmas, it's yeah. a different story. But that's what the Parisians and did. I, they came out and sang, wah, who, wah, who. We saw it. You don't need to who's playing us. We're the same age. We saw the special. Uh, and anyway, the crusty old queen is what you are. The no. Arnos and the whatnots and the LVMHs have already pledged hundreds of millions of yes, euros to rebuild yes, it. You yes. know, and then everyone is also saying, well, why Trump's, can't they give that money to the homeless? Right. Already? Trump suggested that a water tanker should like uh, oh, fly right. over, and they're like, man, that and the French too were very nice. Right? Yeah. They were like, well, I might yeah. destroy it. Yeah, That's uh, but there was reason. somebody who tweeted. I think somebody who told us uh, told Europe to rake their forests should kind of. <laughs> shut oh, the I fuck did up. see that. Yeah, Cheryl. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't Cheryl. I forgot. It was Sarah Silverman or one of those. Yeah, maybe a rake would have helped. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks for listening. That's all we have time That's for. That's all that goes this by week. so quickly. Thanks for tuning into the Wow Report on Radio Andy Series XM. Listen anytime on the Series Radio app or watch anytime mm. on the Wow Report. Same time, same place next week. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow.